Hello and welcome to this video for Electric Pages. My name is Robert Mitchell and today we are here at Austin, Texas for the third day of Embedded World. I think it's the first Embedded World event in Austin. It is. And it's been absolutely fantastic. Now today we are at the Samtech stand and I'm joined by my very, very good friend, Matt Burns. Robin, good to be with you, buddy. How are you again? Not too bad. Wonder, wonder, wonder to see you here in Austin, Texas. We've done this before in Germany. It's fun to do it Many in the US. Times. Thanks and for coming over across the pond. And I'll tell you what, Austin is absolutely fantastic. It is. Great barbecue. Great, oh, barbecue. Great music. Unbelievable. And it's ruined barbecue for me because I can't eat it anywhere else. <laughs> that's, that's true. Texas has the best barbecue on the planet, yeah, so in my I'm opinion. Gonna, so I'm going to go back to the UK and never have barbecue <laughs> ever again. And what we make is not barbecue. So, All right, fair enough. Anyway. We've seen some great stuff in the past from the, from the connectors and the solutions you provide. Yep. What is it that you're showing off today? Good question. So here at Embedded World, one of the things that we're seeing, tons of uh, computer on modules, tons of system on modules. Yep. Uh, we tend to see two different types. One, proprietary, the OEMs kind of make form factors that fit their solutions and yep. fit their customer base, and we see tons of that. Yep. But what we're seeing increasingly are SANS and comms using industry standard interfaces and Samtech will su continues to support industry standards-based SOMs and COMs via various standard bodies. Yeah. PIC, PIC MG or PIC MIG, uh, right. SGET, VITA, PCI SIG, many others. Yeah. Yeah. So what you see here on this display uh, on our side is really a visualization of all the interconnect we make that supports these various uh, embedded platforms. So these are, so you're, so you're essentially creating uh, connectors and standards that are already in the industry that people are already using and you want to try and provide them the best solutions for that. Exactly, and if you look at each of these solutions, whether it's Vita or PicMig or PC104 or uh, SGET, each of these solutions answer specific needs. Uh, obviously, when it's industry standards, you have uh, a consortium of, or, or member companies that all contribute to creating the standard. There's larger buy-in to make it more of a part of an ecosystem. Good example. When you look at Comet, when you look at uh, PicMig, you know one of the workhorses for uh, embedded computing is Com Express. Yeah. Right. Com Express has been around for 15, 20 years, probably since the early part, early 2000s. Yeah. In 2021, Com, uh, the PicMig uh, ComHPC ecosystem uh, released the ComHPC spec. It's a extension of Comi. You know, Comi can get you to like PCI4 data rates. With ComHPC, you can get up to PCI6. It supports 100 gigabit Ethernet. Supports the latest USB 3, Thunderbolt. Uh, so, industry standards are an opportunity to continu continuously innovate, keep up with tech, yeah. and create the platform, the embedded platforms, not only for today, but also for the future. And industry standards are a great way to do that. Samtech is, is really excited to continue to support them and continue to make our solutions available via those uh, avenues. Fantastic. So, my question is, if these are standards, that means there are plenty of other connected companies who also produce this kind of form factor. Correct. So, what is it that Samtech's doing that makes your, uh, your, your standard version better? One of the things that we try to do to differentiate ourselves within the interconnect industry, Robin, is first of all, our sudden service. So that refers to working with the customer, understanding what their needs are, and then proposing the right solution. Yeah. Uh, whether that's you know the right, the, the right technical solution, the right business solution, whatever it is, right? Uh, we also focus on high-speed, high-performance. Yes. So in addition to creating the designs, like with ComHPC or Vita 57.1 uh, and 4, Vita 90, PC 104, whatever, uh, we really focus on signal integrity. So it's not only designing the interconnect, but it's also cre creating the design services, uh, the design support, the design tools to help our customers optimize the performance of the interconnect within their standard uh, form factor. So, so could you give me an idea of the kind of speed we're talking about? What we say is your highest speed part here? Right now, ComHPC, because um, that, that's the latest standard. Um, our ComHPC connectors, uh, Three variants. Uh, they're four, four row, 100 pin, 400 pin total. They come in uh, five meters, uh, five millimeter stack height. Not five meter stack height. God, that would be hard. Large. Okay. Four, five millimeters. Sorry, 400 pins. 400 pins. Oh, blimey. It's about five, uh, five meters wide. Five, five millimeters wide. Five meters. That's, uh, that's sorry. That's the biggest meter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> five millimeters wide. Five yeah. or ten millimeters tall. It's about yeah. 70 millimeters long. That's insane. Um, we can support data rates on that connector of up to 112 gigabit. 112. 112. Oh. Right now we're going through a process within ComHPC to specify for PCI 6, 64 giga transfers per second. 
So when you look at the ComHPC ecosystem, it's really targeted at you know looking at x86 architectures, yes, Intel, yes. AMD, GPUs, FPGAs. Um, you know, you walk around the floor here at uh, Embedded World, you see the carrier cards uh, or, the, or the modules from the Controns, the Conga Techs. Uh, I'm not trying to miss anybody, but I just can't remember the names off the top of my head right now. So ComHPC is, is really the next generation of embedded computing. We're really excited to be a part of it. We're starting to see adoption in the market space and we continue to ex expect more adoption over the next several years. So when you talk about saying 112 gigabits per second on these yeah. connectors, is that in the standard or is that something that you've been able to provide on top of that? It's like you, you, only yours can still provide that really high speed. We've demonstrated 112 gigabit per second performance on that specific connector. Within, this, within the specification, uh, PCI 6 data rates is, is, is where we're going, 64 giga transfers per second. Being able to, de to demonstrate 112 on the connector using, in, in our use case is one thing, demonstrating the performance in the common HPC use case is another. So it's not only picking the right connector, but it's making sure you have the right PCB materials, the right layout on the PCBs, the right via patterns, the right trace lengths, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so would it be right to say that the specification itself doesn't expect to have 112, but you've been able to prove that using your solution and then with the right other tools, it, it, you can achieve it. Exactly, with, yeah. but within the COMHPC specification, especially you know the form factors for the the, the, Com HPC, the Com HPC Mini all the way up to ABCDE module size, you have to lay out the, you know, you have to pick yeah, the chip to, location, course, lay out, lay out the, yeah. Of course. So yeah, yeah. But, 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 but all that, all that SI but supports that in the specification. It. That's it the will. point. That's, That's the point. point. And, and yes. let's come to the next point, which I think is that one area which I can see as being very useful, considering the way that modular design is going, is I can see it being useful in, in future systems whereby you want to make upgrades to the same system exactly. without changing the underlying Precisely. hardware, or even more importantly, software-defined systems whereby Precisely. you need that future-proofing in your design so if exactly. you choose, let's say, a different type of com, uh, HPC com connector, you might find yeah. it can't get to that speed. So in the future, you'd have to replace that board. Yeah. This one, that board's going to last another five, 10 years because yeah. it's got, it, can, it can last that time. Yeah, and, and you're exactly right, Robin. Com HPC has been designed to be scalable, flexible, future-proof the system, right? Not only from, a, from an interconnect standpoint, but also in terms of how much memory you can add into the system. Yes. You know, a small module maybe support two or four chip-down DDRs. But if you get the largest, the largest uh, module in the family, uh, a size E, that supports up to eight DIMM slots. So yeah. it can support up to one terabit of DRAM. You can do a lot of stuff with, with a terabit of DRAM, or terabyte, excuse me. A terabyte. Uh, terabyte, oh, yeah. It, it's, it's a lot of memory with, within the system. So having that scalability and that flexibility on the interconnect, in terms of the modules, in terms of the compute engines that you want it to use, x86 GPUs, FPGAs, whatever, uh, really makes ComHPC the next generation for embedded computing. So, so which uh, industries do you tend to see these kind of connects being used in the most? That's a good question. Um, definitely AI at the edge. Uh, that makes, that so, yeah, sense server grade. Yeah. Grant, we're not yeah. talking about a sensor that's being that's that, that's no, being no, typed that. But if, a high performance yeah, edge AI. Exactly. So if you're doing machine vision, if you're if you're doing some sort of uh, inspection uh, on a manufacturing floor, mm -hmm. instead of taking the data with a remote camera and then send the algorithms the data up to the cloud, you can do all that processing localized and then make a decision instantaneously, which should increase the efficiency of your system. Other, other examples, but that's a, that's a good, a real-time example we see right now. So would, would something like this be useful in maybe server apps as well, where you may have modules that might, might need to be replaced, or is that something that where you use uh, the solution? It's, it's, you're talking more of a data center usage model? So, Probably yeah. not. Uh, it's, it's more of a, a modular approach at the edge. Um, right. One of the use cases that we've seen is, is, is potentially is, is instead of creating a, a, mo a, a carrier card, for one module is creating a bigger carry card for multiple modules. All right. So that's a possibility. Um, that would tie into some of the use cases you have, but that, that's a really powerful AI at the edge use case, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see where that goes, but it is possible. Oh, and, and I suppose that could also be used for the maybe automotive industries as well, where you've got self-driving vehicles that have yes. like, that kind of uh, exactly. data requirements. It could be. Yeah. It could be, yeah. And uh, when it comes to server applications, if I remember correctly, it's the flyover cables that you guys manufacture. Yeah. That, and then the back, the back plane, uh, uh, that's where that stuff's Exactly, go. yeah. So, so obviously we're focused on embedded here at Embedded World, but we do have... Well, of course, yes. Yeah, it's exactly. It's embedded, it's not server, of course. Exactly. But we do have the capability, we do have the capabilities for up to 224 for data center AI uh, in the data center. But, but I do think it's important to mention that because it's nice to know that you guys have a, a, connect, a connector range for everything. So everything from the data center where you've got the fly of the cables mm -hmm. for high data, uh, data transfers during AI training, and then you've got the, uh, the COM HPC where you then move those models to the edge yeah. on a high performance API, uh, uh, AI and you still got the 
sound techniques. We do. Well. And, and e if COM HPC is too high performance, quote unquote, you know, we still have some of the legacy embedded computing platforms, uh, Vita 57, Vita 88, Vita 42, PC 104, uh, what else am I missing? PCI Express, you know, yeah. we're looking at PCI 5, PCI 6, but there's still a lot of systems that are, that are working on PCI, PCI Gen 2, PCI Gen 3. We actually had a conversation earlier today with one of the embedded, uh, embedded uh, uh, Computing, mo uh, computing module vendors uh, that are using uh, Vita 42 yep. at PCI 2, they want to get to PCI 3 or PCI 4, so it's like, okay, Vita 42 upgrades to Vita, Vita 88, different connector, same footprint, it solves your design your design challenges. Whoa. So it's, the, sorry, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the nice thing to, to take away is mm. Samtech and in the, in the embedded systems, tell us what you need, we got it, Absolutely. we'll make it work. And I think it's interesting what you say like about uh, the PC PCI2 being still used. Mm -hmm. I can sort of envision the next sort of five, 10 years where even the basic microcontrollers start to, in to integrate PCI1, 2, and 3s, yeah. because even though they're not super speed, they're still, it's still a really good protocol for yeah. high speed stuff in that embedded field, because you don't yeah. need, because PCI6 is might, might be something you'd have in server apps. It, it means that you don't really kind of need it for yeah. edge device at this point. And but, but using your connectors, you've still got that, yeah. full, that future future proof, uh, uh, future proof of it. Yeah, and you bring up good advantage too for PCI for PCI Express technology. It's mm. backward compatible. So if you have a exactly. if you have the latest chipsets with PCI five capabilities, that same that same chipset is going to support PCI one, two, three, four. Exactly. Uh, it's it's really a uh, advantage of using that protocol. Now I've got another question about sure. one of these connections. You're I'm full really, of questions today, I'm, Robin. And I'm really curious about this. That's okay. It's amazing to see how a 2.54 millimeter pitch is still being used. Yeah, and that, that ties into the fact that here at Embedded World, there are a plethora, almost endless supply of SOMs and COMs um, that are targeted at specific applications. Yeah. So COM HPC is the bleeding edge when you talk about embedded computing, yeah. but we still have companies like VersaLogic, there are a few booths over here that are continuing to drive PC 104 solutions because their customers are still demanding it, right? When you look at PC, when you look at PC 104 and all the standards within that ecosystem, some of those solutions were designed into uh, Mill Aero systems 20 years ago. You know, and you know, so if you need a new board, okay, I need a new, I need a new chipset from Intel, but I still need a PC 104 infrastructure that I designed in 2005. And I can still I can still leverage the interconnect, but with the updated chipset. And I'm guessing things like that could, could technically show more reliability in the sense that it's been proven for sort of 20, 30 years. Yes. You know it's going to work. Yeah. So like, like I said, if you're in a very niche application for military yeah. or aerospace, it's I don't, got to work. I don't need 112 gigabits here. I need exactly. a gigabit. I need, I need a gigabit. Or, a, or 100 megabit. I need a gigabit at a high vibration in, in, in a Precisely. high temperature. And in, Precisely. And it's going to be dropped and it's not going yeah. to basically change. Exactly. Whereas, whereas maybe, uh, I'm not sure if this is true or not for the, H, uh, for the COM HPC, but it might be like, this would be great for applications where you haven't got that same kind of vibration. Because exactly. you've got 400 pins in a tiny space, the chance yeah. of a disconnect compared to something like this one is a lot higher. So yeah. that's great for a desktop thing. That's going to be great for a, a missile shooting at supersonic speeds. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, makes sense. And with, some, and with some of the new solutions that we have coming out within, within Vita, uh, Vita 90 is really focused on uh, mill, mill aero applications. So. I've got another, just one more question before we wrap up this video. Yeah. I'm curious about these. Where would you see, what, what's going That's on Vita here? Vita 57, well, Vita 57, yeah. one, Vita 7.4. Vita this looks like a very high density uh, connector. It is, uh, four, uh, 560 pins, 14 row, 14 row, 40 pins per row. Oh, uh, FPGA, ex, uh, FPGA expansion. You look at any FPGA development kit from Intel, AMD, Lattice, the ecosystem, you'll see an FMC, FMC plus connector on it. And so they're designed for very high, uh, high IO dense sort of applications yeah. where you need to have signals coming off from huge, from, from yeah, exactly. Exactly. Huge exactly. So I take it something like that might be useful in sort of like software-defined hardware platforms where maybe you've yeah. got like a cellular network or a cellular yeah. tower system. You need to put in a brand new logic controller system, yeah. all FPGAs, take it out of the motherboard, put a new one in. Yes. Yeah. It's, it, it's 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 also good for uh, fa uh, rapid prototyping. So if you're oh, no cool. yeah if you if you're no OEM that's using FPGAs for a development platform, you can buy something from AMD, Intel, mm -hmm. Lattice, Microchip, any of the FPGA providers. And there's others I'm missing. My apologies. Um, they all have a Vita 57.4 expansion slot on the board. And then there's dozens of providers that li li where there's literally hundreds if not thousands of FMC Plus modules that may have an, uh, A to D converters, optical, optical solutions, CERTES, wireless connectivity. So you can rapidly prototype a system, get up a, pr a proof of concept, and then once, yeah, you've, you know the once you've got you know, software development, hardware development, 
transfer it to a, a uh, production uh, it, it, uh, it, setting it, it, it really it quickly. It reminds me of the tool we did yesterday with Silicon Labs where they had this kind of like a similar situation with FPGAs yeah. where they test these new devices. So I can imagine this would be something that they would use. So just before we wrap up this video, I've got one more question for you. <laughs> you are full of questions, Robin. Keep them coming, man. You it's keep me right, on my toes. It's all right. It's all right. It's the last question, which is for those engineers who are watching this video, yeah. if they want to get involved with Samtech Solutions, what would you recommend that they do? So, so two things. We've talked about industry standards a lot. So to find information about all the industry standard solutions, samtech.com slash standards, samtech.com slash standards, um, for, for information on everything that we offer, the Samtech website, samtech.com. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to Robert, today. Robert, good seeing you today, buddy. No worries. You got it.